Bergen Jules fans and fans of EFL League Two clubs up and down the country. Pre-season is now in full swing. Teams have been making signings. Teams have been losing key players. Friendlies have been played. Hope springs eternal for a new campaign generally for every single club in the division. So it is that time. So without further ado, I am bringing you my 24-25 Season preview, which would include a big section on duels and then a look at the division as a whole. Of course, culminating in my 1-24 to prediction. So, without further ado, let's get cracking. As always, tried and trusted method is uh, looking at various categories involving the duels. So, we are going to cover transfer business so far as we are recording two weeks just under from the opening day of the season. So there's still plenty of the transfer window left. We will then look at a youngster who will potentially make an impact around the first team this season. Someone who will have a breakthrough campaign, who I think will be our top scorer in the league come the end of the season after 46 matches. And then, of course, the big question where I think Mark Bonner will ultimately lead us to come the end of the campaign. In terms of transfer business, I'm going to start with those players that have departed the club. Um, obviously, there was a raft of youngsters that did not have their contracts renewed at the end of the last season. The likes of Ike Orgy, Matty McArthur, Josh Chambers and a few others were allowed to leave, having not made the grade at the Priestfield Stadium. So we wish them all the best. And then in terms of senior players, the likes of Sean Williams were released. Scott Malone was made available for transfer along with a few others, but he's the one that has departed so far. He has joined Scott Lindsay in League One at Crawley Town after their promotion last season, so we wish him the best. And we also say good luck to Dom Jeffries, who, despite being offered another contract, decided to turn it down, and he is now going to be plying his trade in League One as well, having joined Lincoln City, who finished just outside the playoff zone in League One last season for a nominal fee um, via tribunal, or maybe it was agreed beforehand without going down that route. But ultimately, Dom has moved on to pastures new. So all those that have left, we wish all the best and we move on. Um, in terms of incomings, plenty of good ones. So let's have a look at them as well. Everybody knows the issues that Jules have had over the last few seasons. It's not just something that Mark Bonner needs to sort out. It was something that Stephen Clements and Neil Harris before him and potentially Steve Evans all tried and failed to rectify over the last few campaigns. And that is goals at the top end of the pitch, creativity, chances created and that type of thing. So we've moved really quickly this summer to get things sorted. I think there were four players in uh, before the end of June. First one was Elliot Nevitt just a week after the playoff final defeat for his then club crew. He turned down a contract at Gresty Road to join the Jules um, on a free transfer, which represents really good business. I think he got 18 goals in all competitions for the Alex last season. We'll add, fingers crossed, numbers at the top end of the pitch, as well as a, a nasty streak um, in the sense that he's difficult to play against. He's not going to mind ruffling a few feathers. So yeah, that was the first one through the door. Next up was Armani Little, central midfielder from Wimbledon. Again, turned down a contract with his employers at Plough Lane to come and join the Mark Bonner revolution. Bonner has said that he can play as a six and sit deep and control the tempo of a game or he can play further forward and run from midfield to get into the opposition box. So once he's recovered from a small niggle, it'll be interesting to see how we do operate um, with Armani and how he is employed. Um, with was another problem, wasn't it, over the last couple of seasons. We had Conor Mahoney last year, but that was just it, really. Um, Jaden Clark, um, who we'll get on to a bit later, was, was in and out of the side. Johnny Williams was shunted out there, but didn't really enjoy it, I don't think. Um, and Dom Jeffries, one player who has left, who could play on that left-hand side, albeit not a natural winger, has, has moved on. So, Jack Nolan and Aaron Rowe have both arrived. Nolan on the back of a stellar season for at Accrington Stanley. Um, Reading born, so back home, essentially, or closer to home at least. And yeah, 17 goals and eight assists in League Two last season means that hopefully from that right-hand side we'll, we'll get plenty of direct running, plenty of crosses into the box um, and plenty of goals and assists. Row, slightly different numbers, not quite impressive, as impressive if you look at it at face value, but still had a very good campaign on loan at Crew Alexander from Championship side, Huddersfield Town. He's another one that turned down a contract um, offer 
from elsewhere, I believe. Um, Huddersfield, I think, were releasing him. So, Mark Bonner, Joe Comper, Kenny Jacket, and all those stepped in and managed to get Aaron through the door. He was our fourth signing of the summer window. He's going to bring great one-on-one -on -one ability, raw pace, and yeah, and hopefully some some drive and goal from that left-hand side or centrally because he can play as a 10 as well. And then most recently, just under a week ago, out the blue from Enfield Town, we signed the prolific Marcus Wiley, who scored 34 goals for his side last season as they went up in two, what would now be the National League South if he'd stayed at his club. Um, but yeah, we've done our work, which is great to see. We know that there are good players, unpolished diamonds in the non-league circuit, and we've taken a chance on Marcus. Saw him at Dartford on Tuesday evening and he looked very good in terms of he gets into the right positions. He's, he's playing in the right areas of the pitch. Uh, snatched at one chance, had a good header disallowed. And by all accounts at Southend um, on Saturday, he was, he was in the right area a few times as well. So hopefully he'll nick that first goal sooner rather than later and kick on. But yeah, one we might have to just bear with a little. He's making quite the step up, but the goalposts never change. So yeah, that's our transfer business so far with... Probably still six weeks of the window to go. Next category is going to be a youngster who I think has the potential to make an impact on the first team this season. And as I always reiterate, I don't mean that he's going to come in and suddenly play 30, 40 games, score loads of goals, keep multiple clean sheets or uh, create loads of chances and provide plenty of assists. I just mean someone that has the potential to, to, to maybe be around the squad in the match day environment play some games in the cup competitions and ultimately prove their worth to be cover for first team players um, as the season progresses. One of them that, that might ultimately mean that we, we don't have to dip into the transfer market as much as we first thought. Um, and I'm going for a youngster this year. I had the pleasure of sitting with at the end of season dinner uh, back in April. Um, he's been very impressive in pre-season so far. There's been a lot of the youngsters involved, probably more than we would have thought due to a few injuries and niggles for the first team players or pre-season bodies, as the gaffer calls them. But this is a lad that, that played centre-half, first pre-season friendly against Millwall, and was absolutely immaculate. Um, he's then played at left-back a few times as well over the intervening friendlies up to this point, and he's not looked out of place. I put a short video up on social media a few days ago after the Dartford game of him starting a move that led to a goal for another youth team product, Harry Bridal at Prince's Park just a few short days ago. I'm talking about Sam Gale. Um, just looks completely different to the Sam that we saw in pre-season this time last year. If you if you cast your minds back, played against Millwall, looked lightweight, still looked like a kid playing men's football, gave away a soft penalty because he was very handsy because he got caught the wrong side and got bullied by his man. Looked completely different this summer. Just reads the game really well. He's comfortable taking it off the keeper in his own box, which I think is brilliant. And that'll be something that we need to do as a collective this season if we want to be progressive and get ourselves up the pitch and score more goals. One-on-one -on -one defending's really good. He's good in the air, he's solid in the tackle. And I think he's deceptively quick as well. A few times you, you think that the attacker's going to get to the ball before him, but he just turns on the afterburners. And yeah, he just I just really, really enjoy watching him play. So that's my pick. Player with the potential to have a breakthrough campaign is Sam Gale. Next up, I'm going to look at a player who has the potential to have a breakthrough season. So now I'm talking more about someone that might provide more goals, might play more regularly, might create more chances, might get more assists. Um, and this is a lad that, that we bought in again as probably something of a project about 18 months ago. He arrived in the January transfer window. It was the Gallinson's first window. We had to go out and buy um, players that were first team ready, and we did that. But this player probably wasn't one of them at the time. He was someone that we could could look at and and work with and progress and nurture and coach and train. And, and he had some fleeting moments during 23-24, but they probably were no more than that. Scored a goal in one of the cup competitions at Kenilworth Road. Um, that's probably giving it away. But he'd come back this summer and looks a completely different player. Barely featured under Stephen Clements toward the end of last season for one reason or another. But it looks like this lad's gone right. We've got a new manager. I'm going to make sure that I'm very much involved this season from the off. I've seen a recent interview with him that says that he came back earlier than everyone else because he wanted to give himself a head start. And he's actually been training with a player that's going to be perhaps competing with him per position in the team. And that's Aaron Rowe. Um, I'm talking about Jaden Clark, who's looked very impressive in the three, um, four friendlies so far that we've played. 
Um, missed a good chance against Millwall, that first one up a couple of weeks ago. Got into the box. Probably should have done better with a header on the run, but that's not his game. And, and that's something that we can still work on and improve. Um, was decent in flashes against Watford, another championship team that we saw off by two goals to nil. Played very, very well against Dartford on Tuesday evening and bagged himself a couple of goals. I apologise to everyone because I missed the first one, which was a brilliant finish on the run. Flick of the outside of his right boot over the advancing keeper into an empty net and then showed great awareness to tap home um, after Marcus Wiley had had a shot blocked. Got himself on the score sheet again at Roots Hall just a day ago against South End. So my pick for a player to have a breakthrough season is going to be Jaden Clark. Final individual category for the Jills is, of course, one of the most important roles on the pitch. And that is who has the potential to be our top scorer come the end of the season. We know that we've added a couple of options from January through to now. Josh Andrews came in, was injured, but has shown flashes of what he's about. Scored against Barrow, didn't he, towards the back end of the season. But he's picked up another niggle, it looks like. We've signed Elliot Nevitt. We've then signed Marcus Wiley, two front men. People forget that we've still got Ollie Hawkins and Ashley Naderson on the books. Where are they going to be employed if they don't leave the football club? Ollie's been playing as a centre-back. Ashley, I've been told, played as a winger against South End yesterday. So that might be something that we're looking at if we can't actually get him off the wage bill. If, in fact, Mark Bonner even wants to get rid of him. I'm only saying that because he's one that was made available for transfer when the retained and release list came out a while back now. Um, Jack Nolan, very, very good from the side last season. So this is tricky. Um, and hopefully for the right reasons, not because we've been so blunt in front of goal for a long time, but because we've got plenty of people that do have all the attributes and the potential to go and score plenty of goals. I've got it down to two. Um, so I might sit on the fence. No, got to pick one. Right, I think this season we might have three or four players that get to double figures, get to 12. We might then have a couple that go and get... 15, fingers crossed. Um, Johnny Williams, I think, if he plays regularly in the 10, will get more goals, more assists, and will certainly make more contributions. Um, Jack Nolan, we know cutting off the right will be a threat. We've mentioned Andrews Nevitt, surely going to play plenty of games if available. Um, I'm going to go for Jack Nolan. There we go. My prediction is going to be that our top scorer will be Jack Nolan. I just think... There's been real signs in, in the friendlies of that partnership with Romeo Hutton on the right-hand side, just starting to flourish. We know that Jack likes to dart inside onto his left foot. We saw the goal that he scored against Watford at the Priestfield recently, exactly like that. He says that's his type of goal. That's how he gets most of his goals. I know he takes penalties, so if he gets a few spot kicks, that could bolster his numbers. And I just think with Romeo bombing on on that right-hand side, Jack's going to get a lot of space to play in. People are going to be worried, hopefully, about the likes of Johnny Williams, Aaron Rowe, Nevitt, Andrews. So there's going to be space for, for multiple players to operate in and, and be a threat. So my pick for our top scorer for 24-25 is Jack Nolan. Of course, the big question about Gillingham is where do I ultimately see us finishing? Now, I think if you look at the squad as it stands now, I think we have a, a first 11 that can compete in the top seven, potentially in the top three. Defensively, we've been absolutely fine for, for a long time. I think in terms of a pair of goalkeepers, there's not many better in the division. The experienced Glenn Morris and the up-and-coming, which I think he still is for a goalkeeper. He's very young, Jake Turner. Defensively, we kept loads of clean sheets last season, the season before, even when we really, really struggled. Um, Romeo Hutton at right back. Max Clark, probably one of the best at left back. We've got a solid set of centre-halves to choose from in Shad Ogie, Max Aimer, Connor Masterson. Ethan Coleman was our player's player of the year last season as a shield in front of the back four. We can get him fit sooner rather than later. Then he'll protect. Armani Little looks like a good player. Robbie McKenzie's versatile. Can fill in at either full-back, centre-midfield, centre-back at a push if you play a back three. Timmy Dieng was probably our most informed player over the last month of the last season. Johnny Williams, it looks like we're going to play him in his favour position, so that's good. Um... We've got width, we've got pace, we've got direct running in Aaron Rowe and Jack Nolan and Jaden Clark based on his pre-season form. Um, up front, we're looking to add goals. Josh Andrews, if he can kick on. Elliot Nevitt was proven last season to get good numbers. We've then got the unknown quantity of Marcus Wiley. There's a smattering of, of youngsters that could play a part if need be. So yeah, I think we'll be competitive. But you'll have to wait until the 1-24s to, to come out. 
for me to ultimately tell you where I think we're going to finish. Right, for all you fans of clubs that are not Gillingham have been listening impatiently for me to stop waffling on about my own club, now is the bit where we look at the division as a whole, which will build up to my 1-24 to predictions at the end. I've gone quite deep on it this season. I want to make sure that the research is correct to come up with the most viable predictions that I can do, rather than just going, right, I think they're going to finish there because they've signed this player. I've gone and looked at four categories for each club. So I've got managerial experience, managerial ability, transfer window so far, and squad as, as a whole so far. So I've rated each of them out of 10, which then gives me a total out of 40. So I've created myself a statistics-based table off of that. I've got key-ins and key-outs for each club. Those players that I think will make a big impact. Those players that I think will ultimately leave a big hole in squads. And then, ultimately, we get my predictions, which will be based on all of that. My knowledge. Um, I'll let you lot decide how much of, of that I have. Um, and then a little bit of gut instinct based on last season. The manager a player that I think might have a massive impact having arrived at a new football club. Um, but please remember, it is, it is just my opinion. I'll get some right. I'll get plenty more wrong. That's the way this works. Um, but yeah, if I've got you too high or I've got you too low, let me know in the comments or on social media when it goes live on X and, and on our Facebook forum and Instagram and, and, and we can have a chat because you know your club better than me at the end of the day. Right, that's enough of me explaining how I've ultimately got to where I've got to. Let's have a look. Right, let's just have a rundown of clubs business so far, them key ins and key outs that I've mentioned. So we're starting alphabetical order, Atkinson, Stanley. Um, Michael Kelly, Farron Rawson, Donald Love have come in, will provide experience, but they've lost a lot of good players, haven't they? The likes of Tommy Lee, Tommy Pritchard, Jack Nolan, who's, who's obviously come to my club. So yeah, it's a it's a it's it's been a tricky window for Atkinson, I think. If we go further down, the likes of AFC Wimbledon made some good signings in Miles Hippolyte, Joe Piggott, Alistair Smith, Barrow, Connor Mahoney was with us. Theo Vassell will, play, will provide a lot of experience, but they've lost people like George Ray, Ben Whitfield, James Chester, Anthony Sarsovic, a good player for Bradford, missed the promotion at this level. Bromley, I think, have had a really strong window. Might surprise a few people. The likes of Marcus Dinanga, Omar Shawumni, uh, Lewis Lee have all come in. I don't think they've lost too many that that would have been sort of first team regulars from last season. We're looking into the seas now. Carlisle, good players in Aaron Hayden. Charlie Wyke, if he can reproduce the form of his of his former spell at the club. But they've lost Jordan Gibson, I think, has gone to Doncaster Rovers. That looks like a big player they could lose. Cheltenham under Michael Flynn. Um, Owen Evans, Luke Young will provide experience, but they've lost some good players in Lewis Freestone. I think Liam Serkham, Luke Southwood, I think he's gone to Bolton in League One. Chesterfield, a uh, difficult one to place, aren't they? Um, we all know generally how well teams that come out of the National League do. A um, couple of good signings in, in Che Dunkley and Paddy Madden. Um, but Lawrence Maguire is, is a big loss. I'm not sure why he's not going to be playing for them season. Colchester, they've had a really good window. The likes of John Kamani, Gordon, Jack Payne, Rob Hunt, Matt Macy. I know they've signed Tom Flanagan recently as well. I think that probably counteracts the loss of the likes of Jay Mingy and, and Jaden Fevrier, Cameron and McGeehan have all, have all moved on to, to pastures new in League One. Um, Crew lost a few, haven't they? The likes of, of Luke Offord, Elliot Nevitt, Rio Adebisi have all been moved on from that playoff team last season. Grant McCann's Doncaster been clever so far in the window. Teddy Shamal Lewis comes in as a lone goalkeeper to replace the outgoing Low Latala from last season. Joe Sabar is a player that I've rated in the National League for a while. Um, Harrison Biggins, though, could be a big loss. Um, Fleetwood, nothing that jumps off the page in terms of incomings. Zach Medley, James Bolton, Elliot Bonds. Uh, lost a bit of experience in the likes of Jaden Stockley, Ben Hennigan, um, and then some promising youngsters, literally, promise Omachire and, and Junior Quinn Turner have both moved on. Um, Gillingham, my own team, we've already gone through them. I think the key departure is probably Dom Jeffries looking at the injuries we've got in the middle of the park at the moment. Just leaves us a bit light. Um, he's gone to Lincoln, like I've already mentioned. Grimsby Town, be interesting to see how they go under uh, David Artell this season. He's got his feet under the table. Matty Carson, Tyrrell Warren look like solid enough additions. But they've lost the likes of Harry Clifton, Toby Malarkey, Gavin Hollihan. For me, I think them it'll be more about how 
Artel continues to, to implement what he wants to do with that football team. Simon Weaver, I've been at Harrogate for years. A couple of all right signings in, in Stephen Duke McKenna and, and Zico Azare, but they've lost big players in, in Rob McDonald and, and Abraham Odo, uh, one to Notts County and one to Peterborough, I believe, in League One. MK Dons have gone absolute madness, haven't they, in the, in the window? Liam Kelly, Lawrence Maguire, Conan Lemon, Hay Evans, Callum Hendry, there's others as well. Uh, they've brought in plenty. I think Toby Pritchard and uh, Toby Lee, both from Accrington as well. Big loss for me will be Max Dean. It'd be interesting to see how they replicate that, but I think the incomings far outweigh the outgoings at the moment. Um, Morecambe, fingers crossed that their behind the scenes problems are over. Made 15 signings in a day, didn't they? <laughs> um, obviously, a lot were those that they were waiting on and, and being given permission to be able to sign people back on that were already with them last season. I like the signings of, of George Ray. Harry Burgoyne, I think, has got the potential to be a solid number one at the level. Um, Lee Angle, I think, is their most recent one. I'd be interested to see how he goes. Seems to have been around forever. But they have lost some good players. Farron Ross and Jacob Badeau, JJ McKeon and Joel Senior have all left because of all the issues they had at the start of the summer. Um, Final few now, Notts County. Uh, sorry, Newport County first. Um, Kieran Brennan, Matthew Baker, Courtney Baker, Richardson have all arrived. Lost a bit of experience and some goals in, in Joe Day, Scott Bennett and Omar Bogle. Do fear for them a little bit. Managers an unknown quantity. Notts County recruited really well. We know where their issues were last season, all defensively. And they've certainly, at least on paper, rectified that with the likes of Rob McDonald, Jacob Badeau. Robbie Cundy coming in, might not even be a starter. Uh, Nick Sarula, promotion winner with Crawley last season. But Alex Bass looks like a really, really good sign in between the sticks. Obviously, the big loss is going to be all them goals of Macaulay Langstaff. But if they can sort that out and uh, still create plenty of chances for, for players, then, then they'll surely have a good season. Port Vale, and I'm very, usually very sort of cautious about sides that come down and get relegated. Obviously, you've got to learn how to win football matches again because if you have been relegated the season before, you've not won enough. Um, but their business just jumps off the page for me. Uh, Ryan Crowsdale, George Byers, ridiculous signing. Ronan Curtis, Lawrence Alarge, they're all the big ones. I don't think they've lost any key players, really, um, from last season. Salford City, tricky one. Uh, looks like they've changed their approach under Carl Robinson in terms of their transfers. Cole Stockton looks like a good player at the level if you can get him back to his Morecambe form of a couple of years ago. Stephen Negru, James Chester, Matty Young all come in as well. Chester will provide loads and loads of experience, but he is getting on in years. Um, they've lost a few good players, haven't they? Alex Kens has been one of the best keepers in the EFL for a while for me. Elliot Watt, plenty of assists a couple of seasons ago. He's gone. Callum Hendry's gone to MK Dons. Matt Smith's been released despite scoring nearly 30 goals in the league last season. Swindon, under a new manager, Grant Hall, Harry Smith, Will Wright and Ollie Clark are players that I think could be solid signings. But they've lost big ones. Charlie Austin's moved on. Fraser Blake Tracy's left and gone up to Burton, I think. Um, last couple, Tranmere Rovers, Sam Finley, Cameron Norman look like decent enough players at the level, but I don't think they've done enough in the window yet. Um, I don't see any key players they've lost in terms of their own. Of course, there's a massive Rob Apter gap on the right-hand side. Can they fill that? And last, but by certainly not least, is Walsall. Tommy Simpkin, Charlie Lakin, David Ogakbu and Albert Odoma are the players that stand out for me in terms of intrigue and ability. Um, they've lost Owen Evans, like I've already mentioned. Their keeper's gone to Cheltenham. Um, but the big one is Isaac Hutchinson, who I think was double figures for both goals and assists last season. So that's a big gap and big boots to fill, presumably for Charlie Lakin to come in. Um, but yeah, that's that's club's business so far. Um, that's one of the points I've looked at to get to where I get to. But let's get into it now. Let's get into the 1-24s. to We'll have a look in depth at the top three, the bottom two, and then we will fill in the gaps as we go. Right, without further ado, let's crack on with this league table. We will, of course, do it in reverse order like we always do. So... If you're watching now in anticipation, you don't want to hear your club's name for quite a while because we are starting at the bottom, unfortunately. And in 24th, I'm sorry for fans of this club, but I have to put someone in the bottom two. Um, there's a few reasons. I think the manager comes in, doesn't have any experience in England, um, don't know much about his ability. So there's a lot of unknowns, um, signings they've made. Don't fill me with great excitement. Their squad, I don't think, was was a great squad to start with. And, and, and obviously, they sacked their manager, Graham Cochran, sort of a month after the season ended, which I, I didn't really understand. So for me, 
unfortunately, a combination of Nelson Yardim being unknown. And don't get me wrong, if he comes in and hits the ground running, it could be a masterstroke. They might finish far higher. Um, but yeah, a combination of that, taking too long for me to sack the manager previously. Um, a squad that, that doesn't have enough quality for me. I'm unfortunately back in Newport County to finish bottom of the league. Also getting relegated in Newport County in 23rd place is a club that lost a bona fide club legend a few months ago in John Coleman. He's been replaced by John Doolan, um, which gives it away who my pick is. Yeah, I just think they've they've lost too many good players. They've lost the experience of John Coleman. There's been rumours of their owner, Andy Holt, wanting to sell up. There was that big falling out, wasn't there, with, with Coleman and his assistant manager last season as well. So I'm not sure everything is too rosy behind the scenes um, as an outsider looking in. Um, so, yeah, my pick um, for 23rd and the second relegation spot, unfortunately, will be Accrington Stanley. 22nd, I have a club that have been punching well above their weight for the last few seasons in League Two. It's been one of the success stories of the last decade or so. They have a chairman-manager, father-son combination at the helm. Um, but how long can Simon Weaver keep working his magic um, they've lost good players this summer, the likes of Rod McDonald and Abraham Odo. That's a lot of defensive stability and creativity lost amongst them two players. So for that reason, I'm backing Simon Weaver's Harrogate to finish in 22nd. 21st is a club that were very difficult to place because if you look at their manager and his experience of success at the level, then they are probably top two or three. But then if you factor in all the off-the-field issues, a squad that's probably lacking in a lot of quality in a lot of areas at the moment um, and a transfer window that has, has been underwhelming at best because of those off-the-field issues, meaning they've lost a lot of good players. Um, the likes of, of Rawson, Badeau, McKinnon and Senior, like I've already mentioned. Um, it means that I think they'll probably finish a lot lower than their managerial expectation but I think at the same time, Derek Adams will have enough about him to keep them up. So for me, 21st will be Morecambe. Next up in 20th is another club that for me are a little bit similar to Morecambe just below them in that they've got a good manager who's been very, very successful at EFL level. Um, he's got loads of experience, but I just think their squad lacks a lot of quality. I think their window's been average. Um, there's a lot of question marks over those players that have come in. We already spoke about and this is the giveaway, Cole Stockton. Can he replicate that form of a few seasons ago? If not, where are the goals going to come from? They've lost Callum Hendry. I'm not sure what the, the process is of the, of the transfers at the moment. They seem to be trying to lower the average age, but you have to have some experience for me at any level to be relatively successful regarding whatever your aim is. So for them reasons, my pick in 20th is going to be Salford City. 19th, I'm going for a club that did get relegated out of League One last season and I can't see them finishing too much higher than, than where I'm putting them, regardless of how the rest of their window goes, unless they pull absolute rabbits out of a hat. I mean, their manager lacks experience. Um, that's not to say that, that he won't be a success in the mid to long term, but I've got to talk about the here and now. Um, like I said, I think they've lost more good players than they've bought in. So a combination of that and the fact that Charlie Adam is, is new to the managerial games, that means my pick for 19th place will be the Cod Army, uh, Fleetwood Town. In 18th is another club with a new manager, um, one who has dropped down a level from his last job, I believe. I think he was at Lincoln City um, before being relieved of his duties there at Sinsel Bank. Fairly inexperienced as an EFL gaffer for me, which is a little bit of a red flag. Um, they've made some solid signings at the level, don't get me wrong. Like I say, I think Harry Smith will score your goals. But my big concern with him is he spends too much time missing games because he's always getting himself sent off for stupid reasons. I think Will Wright's a good addition, having been promoted. Ollie Clark from Mansfield, Grant Hall, solid as well from Rotherham. But Mark Kennedy's where I think this club will fall down. And I think the lack of experience means that they'll be lower to mid-table. So my pick for 18th is Swindon Town. Next is a club who are managed by someone that used to be a player for Gillingham. So I do have an affinity to this man. He did a great job at Rodney Parade a few years ago, keeping him in the Football League. When he took over, they were absolutely miles behind the eight ball. It probably goes down as one of the great escape acts of the last few seasons. If not, 
longer term. But our jobs at Walsall and, and Swindon's seats then have, have probably hurt the reputation of Michael Flynn. Looking at the squad, I don't think they've replaced what they've lost with sufficient quality. Their squad doesn't fill me with loads of confidence or excitement either. So therefore, my pick in 17th is Cheltenham Town. My pick for 16th, for a club that really, really excites me this season. Um, and I'll give you a clue. I watched them win at Wembley a few months ago to get where they are now. Um, I think their manager is very highly rated. Um, and I believe he was linked with our post a couple of years ago, but turned it down to finish his project, which he's certainly doing. Um, I'm, of course, talking about Andy Woodman. I think they've had a brilliant window. Um, the likes of Dinanga, if he can replicate his National League form, which I think is entirely possible, uh, stepping into League Two, then then they'll score goals. They've obviously got Michael Cheek already, who finally gets his shot at the EFL. I think Omar Shawumni is a solid signing at centre-half. Lewis Lee coming in is very, very good business as well. And looking at their release list, there's there's not many players, well, I don't think there's any players, in fairness, that, that have gone, that didn't play only a minimal part last season. So it's not like they've lost players that were influential in what they did in getting promoted out of the National League. So I think this is a club that, that has the potential to have one of the biggest differentials. So I'm going to have them as 16th, but they could finish top half or they could really struggle. I'm not really sure. But my pick in 16th is Andy Woodman's Bromley. Next up is a club who have lost a manager who was synonymous with everything they've done well over the last few seasons. If you look at 22, 23 and 23, 24, they spent a lot of time in the top seven, but ultimately fell short on both occasions. We beat them comfortably 3-0 towards the end of last season. They now have a manager and a player who were employed by us just a few short months ago in Conor Mahoney and Stephen Clements. Um, other business for them. Uh, experience in Theo Vassell defensively. A lot of question marks for me though over Andrew Dallas, so that's why I've put that in as key in. Potentially it could be really good if he can find his form from a few seasons ago, but his numbers have not been great recently. In terms of departures, they've lost the likes of James Chester, George Ray, Ben Whitfield, players that provide experience, that provided a nucleus to a team that was very, very good at what it did for a long time. So I just think that, coupled with the fact that Stephen Clements has a lot of question marks over him, Obviously, he's going to have the benefit of a full pre-season, which will help. Um, that is why I'm going to be a little bit cautious with this side. So my pick for 15th is Barrow. Next up is a club that I'm going to put in this position based more on their manager and what I think he can get out of the football team and the squad over how good I think the squad itself actually is. Um, they've not done any business that really jumps off the page for me. A couple of solid additions at fullback. Uh, but they have lost some good players as well. We mentioned that earlier in the video, the likes of Clifton, Malarkey, Hollihan. Um, but yeah, I just think if, if David Artell can, can put his stamp on things and get his team playing in a more consistent manner the way he wants them to do, a bit like his Crew Alexander team did a few seasons ago, then I think they'll be fine. Um, I'm not saying they're going to be top half or challenging for the playoffs, but I think they'll be solid enough. So my pick for 14th is Grimsby Town. Top of the bottom half is a club that threatened to gate crash the playoffs in periods of 23, 24, but ultimately come up short like ourselves. Um, their manager, I feel, still think has a few question marks over him in terms of experience and know how. Talking to fans of this club over the course of last season, at times they thought he was doing really well, and then there'd be periods where it was they wanted him gone. Huge question marks. He was getting it wrong tactically, his changes were, were wrong. He was setting teams up incorrectly. Um, they've had a decent enough window, but I don't think they've added maybe a difference maker at the moment. And they've lost one, ultimately, which is why I'm being cautious with this club. Um, like I said earlier, there'll be a lot of onus on Charlie Lakin to fill the boots of Isaac Hutchinson. Um, but that is a big ask because Hutchinson's been consistently very good at this level over the last few seasons, and at times seems to have carried Walsall all by himself. So yeah, they are going to be my pick as top of the bottom half in 13th, Walsall. Into the top half we go, and in 12th, I'm going to go for a club that had a very, very good season in 23-24. They probably uh, exceeded expectations by some distance. I think if you spoke to fans of this club at the start of last season and said you're going to be in the playoffs and you're going to get all the way to Wembley, 
they had a bit in your arm off, I'm, I'm fair to say. I think ultimately they came up short and lost 2 0 to Crawley at Wembley. Since then, they've lost a few key players, the likes of, of Luke Offord, Rio Adabisi, um, Elliot Nevitt to ourselves, Gillingham. Are their signings the same quality? It remains to be seen. Omar Bogle blows hot and cold. If he's hot, he's very hot, but can go missing for periods of a season. Um, Jack Lancaster, I like. I think will be a good player for them. Lee Bell, still fairly inexperienced. Can he replicate what he did last season? I'm not sure. So that coupled with the fact that they've lost a few key players means that for me, in 12th place, will be Crew Alexandra. 11th is another team that always seem to be difficult to place, that always you think should be challenging the top places, should be doing well based on fan base, structure, size of the stadium, size of the club. Um, but they just seem to keep getting it wrong. Um, in their manager, I think they've got someone who's very experienced and, and, and fairly successful at the level. So that's two pluses. But again, their squad is one that, that just seems to lack a little bit of magic. I think if you take a couple of players out of their first 11, they struggle. Um, Anthony Sarsovic, there's your giveaway. I think he's, he's a very good addition, but he's the wrong side of 30. Tyreek Wright could be a very good signing. They've not lost loads in the way of key players. I'd probably say Matty Platt's one, who's been moved on. But there's just something that's holding me back with this club. So my pick for 11th is Bradford City. 10th is a side that if he was based on managerial experience and managerial ability in the EFL, they would win the league. Um, but unfortunately, there's more to it than that. I think they've made a couple of solid additions so far, but nothing more than that, like we said earlier. In terms of players that they've lost, I don't think they've lost anyone that was actually their players that would that'd be a massive miss. But they have lost someone that was on loan last season from Blackpool and was very good consistently. Um, and I'm talking about Rob Apter. Um, which gives it away. I think Nigel Atkins is a brilliant manager at the level. I think if you look at his points per game since he's taken over there, they're right up there in the division. Um, will they score enough goals? I'm not sure. Will they create enough chances without Apta? I'm not sure. So for that reason, I think Tramia will be better again than they were during 23-24, but won't have quite enough to gatecrash the top seven, the top three. So for that reason, in 10th is Tramia Rovers. Ninth is a side that had a very successful season last time around as they won the National League, an absolute canter. I don't think there was a fan base in the country that was more pleased to see two sides disappear in Notts County and Wrexham. I'm, of course, talking about Chesterfield. In Paul Cook, they have a very good manager. Again, he's been successful at various levels of the EFL, has one of the best voices in the Football League as well. <laughs> Love a Paul Kick interview. So yeah, if you're talking about his experience and his ability as a gaffer, they're going to be right up there. But I just think there's a few gaps in their squad. They've got some good players. They've made a couple of good signings, really good signings in Che Dunkley and Paddy Madden. We know how successful Madden's been at this level, promoted with Stockport out of the National League, out of League Two. Um, but... Like I say, it's them gaps that just concern me a little bit at the moment and are stopping me from putting them higher. So my pick for ninth and just missing out on the playoffs is Chesterfield. Eighth for me is probably the worst position to be able to finish in League Two. It's that one place outside the playoffs where a whole season's work is ultimately for nothing by the finest of margins. I think Mansfield a few times have finished there before finally getting it right last time around and getting themselves up promoted automatically. Um, this is a team that came down from League One last season. I've already mentioned that I'm not always keen to have teams relegated too high in the table, but they've been taken over. They've got a good budget, I believe, for the level. Very good budget. They got good players. They signed players in January that would be ready for League Two if they did come back down, which they did with a bit of a whimper in the likes of, of Harry Lewis and uh, Luke Armstrong. They've made some good signings so far this summer. The likes of Aaron Hayden jumps off the page. Ethan Robson, I think, will be solid in the middle of the park, having been released by MK Dons. Charlie White, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if he replicates the form that he showed in his first spell, 
excellent. But there's been a lot of question marks over Charlie because of his health over the last couple of years. Um, I don't think they've lost loads in terms of key players. I think we mentioned Jordan Gibson, but I just think they might come up short. But I'm not sure why. So apologies for that, Carlisle fans. But my pick for eight is Carlisle United. Right, you can start getting excited now if you've not yet heard your club because it means, at worst, you're in the playoffs. To caveat that, it's only me saying it, which is, is never a guarantee. Um, but seventh is a club who I think have had a very, very good summer. Regardless of the fact that they've lost a couple of good young players from their squad, I think their manager is probably one of the best at the level at what he does. Um, it's not always pretty on the eye, but it's certainly efficient. It's certainly effective. So I think tick managerial experience, tick managerial ability, tick the squad that's being built, tick the transfer window. Very, very good. The players that they've lost, Cameron McGeehan, Jay Mingi, Jaden Fevrier, were good players. But I think a couple of them were potential more than the here and now. So are they going to be as big a miss as people may be envisage. I think the players that they've bought in are ready-made for League Two. John Kamani, gordon Jack Payne, a really good signing. Rob Hunt, solid, got promoted with Leighton Orient a couple of years ago, I believe. Matt Macy in goal will be good. Like I said, I think they've signed Tom Flanagan recently, solid enough, League One defender, League Two defender. So for me, first playoff position in seventh place, and it might be a bit of a surprise, is Colchester United. In six, I've got a side that were pretty much in a relegation battle for two-thirds of 23-24 before making the most miraculous of turnarounds. I think from March till the end of the season, they lost one game in the regular season. I think they won 11 on the bounce or 10 at one point. Went from probably 16th to the playoffs in the blink of an eye, it seemed. Their business in January was unbelievable in terms of getting players in that make a huge difference. Um... My only concern with them is now that they're gone, they've got to start again. So will they have a slow start again? I like their business. Jordan Gibson is solid. Joe Sabara has got untapped potential at this level. I like Teddy Shaman Lewis is going to come in and, and be the goalkeeper. Their manager, Grant McCann, solid enough. Will there be a hangover though from that playoff campaign defeat, having been in such good form? And we have to remember being tuning up after the first leg and managing to mess it up. Um... If they can get that out of their system fairly quickly, they'll have a very good season and might even be higher. If it takes them longer, then maybe a bit lower. So there is a little bit of wiggle room for this team. But for me, ultimately, sixth place will go to Doncaster Rovers. In fifth place, I've got another club that might be classed as a bit of a surprise. I think their business has been very good. I think their squad is very solid all over the pitch. For me, there's probably just a little question mark over their managerial um, situation. I'm not saying he's a bad manager. We have to remember that he took over at another club in the division above on interim period a couple of times before getting the gig full time and then it didn't quite work out. So he's done well in spells, this manager, but there seems to be other times where he's, he struggles and, and his, his club struggles to pick up points. But if, if Johnny Jackson can iron out them issues, I think this team's going to be a real force. I like the additions of Miles Hippolyte I really like the addition of, of Joe Piggott coming back on loan. He knows the club. He knows that he was successful at the club. Alistair Smith on loan from Lincoln, I think it is, looks like a really good addition. Smart business. They have lost a few as well. Jack Curry will probably be the big one at left back. He's gone to the championship, I think, with Oxford United. Also, Ronan Curtis um, has left. He's gone to Port Vale in the same division, which is an interesting one. And, of course, Armani Little's come to Gillingham. But I think their business is good. I think their squad's solid. I think it's balanced enough. I think they'll score goals. Um, so for me, fifth place will go to AFC Wimbledon. Fourth place and just missing out on the automatic promotion places. And I cannot believe I'm going to say this. It's my own club, Gillingham. I think, as I mentioned earlier, when I was concentrating on us, I think that the team is good enough to be in the top three, the first eleven. Certainly the top seven has to be the absolute minimum aim. But at the moment, there's probably still a few gaps just to fill in in terms of the squad. We've been missing the likes of Armani Little, Ethan Coleman, Johnny Williams, um, Josh Andrews Elliott Nevitt the last couple through pre-season. Marcus Wiley's probably got more minutes than he thought having arrived from non-league, from the Istanbul Premier League. So yeah, I think there's still a couple of positions where we've just got to add some some competition and a little bit more quantity quality. Sorry, I think 
if Robbie McKenzie's going to be deployed as a central midfielder more often, then we need someone to cover at right back because Harry Rebster's not ready yet, despite being very good in pre season. Is Shadogi a left back? I'm not sure. So we might need another left sided full back. That brings us on to the, the Ollie Hawkins conundrum. If he stays, he's played all of his minutes so far as a central defender. So we could have cover there in the sense that, that Shad might just shift out on the odd occasion, but I'm not sure he's entirely comfortable there. Do we need another winger? We've got Aaron Rowe, we've got Jack Nolan, we've got Jaden Clark. Do we need one more? But then Joe Bode's played out there. Ashley Naderson got minutes from the side against Southend. It could just be out of necessity. Um, but ultimately, you don't know until those players that are made available for transfer ultimately either move or don't. So I think we're probably one or two short from me being confident enough to say we're definitely getting the top three. So for my reasoning, my pick for fourth place is my club, Gillingham. Into the top three we go. There are three clubs that have not been mentioned. And if you are still watching at this point, thank you very much. But you can get very excited now. Or you can blame me for putting you in the top three and ultimately ruining your whole campaign before it has even started. In third place, I have a team that have had a very, very good window. <coughs> Excuse me. We know their issues were defensively last season. I think they scored and conceded over 80 in League Two, which was frankly ridiculous. I do have question marks over their manager, uh, Stuart Maynard, I'm not sure he got much right when he took over from Luke Williamson, who went to Swansea in the Championship. But he's another with the benefit of a pre-season, like a few others in this division. And he's a manager that's got a very, very, very good squad to work with, which will help him out. Like I've said, their business has been phenomenal. They've certainly gone about it the right way in sorting out those defensive issues with the likes of Rod McDonald, Jacob Badeau, Robbie Cundy, Nick Sarula, Alex Bass, all coming into the squad. Um, there's others as well. The big hole is obviously, as we've already said, Macaulay Langstaff. But you have to remember they've still got Dan Crowley. They've still got Jody Jones. Um, they, they've got other strikers as well. And if you're getting that much ammunition flung into the six-yard box or the 18-yard box, you're going to create chances and ultimately score goals. So for me, Knox County are still top three quality. And that's why they are my pick for third. Notts County. Runners up but going up are a club that were relegated out of League One last season. But their transfer business has been so hard to ignore that I couldn't get them any lower than this. As hard as I did try, I must admit, um, because of them reasons. I think the hangover from relegation is, is, is potentially a small concern. But like I've said, the players they bought in have been really, really good. And, and, and look ready-made for this level. Um, one was a player that I had on my potential targets video a couple of months ago for Jill, so I was disappointed he's gone elsewhere. Their manager has proven himself to be very good in League One before. He's uh, been very close with, with Doncaster before moving on. He's got Sheffield Wednesday promoted to the Championship. So it's probably a bit of a surprise to see Darren Moore now in League Two, having taken over at the Valiants at the back end of last season. So for me, they've got one of the best at the level. Ryan Crowsdale was a ridiculously good signing. George Byers, ex Sheffield Wednesday. Curtis will provide that nasty element from the side, but he gets goals, he provides chances, he creates goals. Uh, Lauren Talarge is the player that I was disappointed he went to Port Vale. It was someone I'd wanted us to have a look at. We might have done, I do not know. Very good numbers at Aldershot. Um, and I think he'll make the step up comfortably. And again, it's a squad that I don't think have lost players that. that will impact on, on their quality in their first 11 in their squad. So for me, second place goes to Port Vale. Champions for me will be Mike Williamson's MK Dons. Uh, they were phenomenal after he took over last season in the autumn. Went on a brilliant run and got themselves into the playoffs, but then were humbled and embarrassed by Crawley Town over two legs. I can't even remember what the aggregate score was. And it was something ridiculous, like 7-2, I think, wasn't it? Um, but they've got a squad packed full of quality. They've got a manager that has stepped up from the National League and been very good. They play nice brand of football. They score goals. They create chances. Um, they've picked up some really, really good signings over the summer. Liam Kelly was probably one of the best central midfielders in the division for me last season, getting promoted with Crawley Town. He's jumped on board. Lawrence Maguire's a great addition at centre-half. 
Uh, Connor Lemon Hay Evans has done been there and done it with Stockport County at the level. Callum Hendry comes in to probably be a centre forward to replace the outgoing um, Max Dean, who's gone abroad to Toulouse in France. I think. So I think that's a like-for-like like swap, coupled with the good players that they've already got. A chairman that will back them, a very good manager. I cannot see beyond this club. So my pick for League 2, 24-25 champions, will be MK Dons. Right, that is it. I've looked at my club. I've looked at your club. I've made my predictions and locked them in. My 1-24s to are complete. Thank you if you are still watching at this point. It really is appreciated whether you're a Jules fan or a fan of any other club in League 2. Please leave me your feedback in the comments down below, like I've said, or on X, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you find us. Please continue to hit that like button. Please press subscribe. Please tell your friends about us because I love this division. I love my football club. Yeah, we are very close to 3,250 subscribers. So if you could hit that sub button, it would be greatly appreciated. The quest now is to get towards 3,500 throughout the season. So any little help will be appreciated. It is free. All you need is a Google Mail account. Right, we are done. The season is less than two weeks away. I cannot wait. New shirts have been purchased a long time ago. We are at home to Carlisle first day of the season. Wherever you are, travelling up and down the country, have a safe journey. Have an enjoyable 24-25 season. But until then, enjoy the rest of your pre-season. And up the jewels. Mm -hmm.